if you see anybody, um, cause do, if you get to see people and what they're saying, if, if it's anything good, you know, you can. So it'll show up in the chat. How will it show up? I don't even know. It should, yeah, it'll show up. It should show up in the, um, we're on, I think we're on. Yeah, it said it's, we're live. We are live already. Yeah. Hello everyone and welcome. It's February the 27th, 2022. We are here again on Facebook Live for Bible study. I have my little sister in Christ on. Welcome, Latia. Hi, well, thank you. Thank you so much, Jewel. <laughs> my big sister. I just love her so much. I love her spirit. I know that she loves God. And tonight we're going to be talking about trusting God. And so um, it's so interesting because I have trust God on my tags and mm. I'm still trying to figure out if, I, if I'm trusting him to the, to the max that I should be trusting him. Like we can always go higher. We can always go deeper into things of God. And so I always want him to just show me more, more of whatever topic we're talking about. Cause I'm hungry. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> of God. And so we're going to talk about trust God tonight. And even though for the last three weeks, we have been talking about the fear of the Lord and I felt like God wasn't finished yet. Mm. And I kept saying, okay, Lord, should we be talking about the fear of the Lord or should we talk about, cause we had this topic for, for a couple of weeks now that we were going to talk about it. And so as I was studying it, the Lord said, you cannot be in awe of the Lord or have reverence or respect for the Lord unless you trust him. <laughs> so this is, it just fits in perfectly. So, so, and make sure we talk about your book later on too. So we're going to talk about trust God. And so the word trust, mm -hmm. as, as most of you guys know, I'm always going back to the Hebrew version because this was written during their time. It was for their people and their words are different than our American language. And so I wanted to just, so I went back and was like, okay, what's the Hebrew word for this? What does it really mean? And so it is betak is the Hebrew word and it means faith, mm -hmm. trust, belief, confidence, allegiance, devotion, security, and hope. Mm, wow. It means all of those things. Mm. And so it's to set one's hope and confidence upon. Mm. It is to be secure, fearing nothing. And we talked about that protection last week of the awe and the fear of the Lord, how we are when we're with God and under the umbrella of Jesus Christ, there is a protection. Yeah. And so there, therefore we have the trust. We, 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 because there's that protection because we're under him, we have that trust in him. Mm -hmm. And so Latia and I were just talking about, well, how do you trust God? Like we know what it means to be trust. We talked about it from a personal standpoint. Like I am not going to have anyone on the call with me that I don't completely trust mm -hmm. that I know that they love the Lord with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength. Plus, this, this young lady has a lot of years with me <laughs> and she, <laughs> she has been faithful to me um, in everything that I've done and, and supported me. And so there is this trust there because over the years we've built this relationship because how old are the boys now? 16. So I've known you since the boys were infants. Yeah. When you Car seats. <laughs> <laughs> had them and so over 16 years we built this relationship and we have a mutual respect of reverence for one another for the God in one another yeah. and so how do you get that respect for the Lord that that trust in the Lord same right. way it's the same exact way like every time you have an experience with a person it adds to like your memory bank right so I know every time I'm with you, you are a powerful woman of God. You know, you're in your word, you're praying. And so I trust that when you bring me on one of your, 
your Zooms or your Bible studies that everything that you're talking about is Holy Spirit led, you know, like you're not going to be putting me on the spot and, and, and making things look crazy. I, I trust you. So in the same way, our experiences with God, it, it's like built upon. It's a, pro, a progression. You know, it's not like automatic. I don't trust God. Just, just one day I wake up and I trust God. No, it comes from us having experiences with him. I trust him because when I had my children 16 years ago, he was with me and I went through anxiety. I went through a whole lot of things, but every experience I've had with God has built, built my faith in him so I can trust him more and more and more every single time. So it's not like an automatic thing, trusting God. It's like a continuous thing. And even now, you know, I've been walking with the Lord for, I don't know how long since I was like 18, but, and I'm 30, I'm 38 now, (laughs) but so about 20 years, but even now I'm still like learning to trust him more and more. It hasn't happened like instantly, like I said. So it, it definitely, it's definitely a process. And what do you say to those people? Because I know, and I just felt in my heart when I was studying this, that people were, that God was saying that people don't trust him. And I think people don't trust him one, because they don't really know him. Right. One, two, as you were saying, they haven't had experience, true experiences, because we will say, hallelujah, uh, look at what God did when we get a car or when we buy You're frozen. And we seem to think that he's bad. You know, he took this person away from me or he, you know, or this person died and God could have saved. Like, what do you say to those people who don't have that built in trust because they feel like he did something bad to them? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, that one's, it's tough because again, if you don't know God, through like an intimate relationship, if you don't know that he's good all the time, regardless if I understand it or not, he's a good, loving father. And so if you don't know him, it's going to be hard for you to understand that things that happen are from the enemy. For one, we got to explain that to them. Death is not, I don't believe that God just takes people out like that. He's a loving God. Death, the Bible, what does the Bible say about death? Um, The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy right so if we know that god is loving and if he's good and he's 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 full of truth you know he's the one that will will continue to teach us of his love so i mean i can't i can't i can't i can't speak on on god being the one that causes problems because he doesn't i know that he's a good and loving god so so, so what what we also know that the Bible says is that uh, to every season there is a purpose. You know, there is life. There's death. You know, things happen, right. and we know that um, that death is is imminent. That we have an expiration. Everybody has a beginning when you're born and a time to die, which is what the Bible says, right? And so, a lot of times, what we do, I think most of us do, is when death is right there knocking at the door of a loved one, we tell God to fix it. Mm -hmm. And when God doesn't fix it, because there could be a purpose why it is their time to go, then we're mad at God and that we then don't find him faithful. But Mm -hmm. a lot of times we need to just trust, you know, the way I built my trust in God is I know what I want, but it may not be in line with what he wants, right? And so I always pray what Jesus prayed because mm-hmm. Jesus wanted to him to take that cup of suffering from him. And he's, he was like, Lord, I don't want to go through this. But he said, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Mm-hmm. And so when you get to that point where you are praying for God's will to be done, and if something doesn't line up according to yours, then you know, okay, you were wrong. Right. And, right. <laughs> it, you know, so because his will is going to be done. And all that's going on in the earth, you know, there's a there's the pestilence of COVID, there's 
you know, war, we want to pray for them too. We want to pray for the countries too um, when we get off. Um, there's war going on. There's so much going on in the world and the enemy is very, very busy. And what people don't understand is we can't see from the spiritual realm. Right. There's a spiritual war going on. There's a natural war going on and there's a spiritual war going on. But we have to trust God because I'm going to tell you now, he who's going to win, he going to win. Absolutely. Absolutely. He's going to win every single time. And so we have to be able to trust God when all is going on in the world that we trust him because he has an expected end for us. Mm -hmm. He has a plan and a purpose. He's not doing this happenstance that, you know, like he knows what's going on <laughs> way down into the future. Right. So I just want to get into just a little bit dig deeper into what betak, which is the Hebrew word for trust means. And so betak has three letters. It has the bet, which is they, they use um, pictures in Hebrew. And so it's a picture of a tent. Um, it's home, family. It's like inside you're abiding and you're resting. And so this is where, if you think about your own home, like your parents in, in your home that you grew up, hopefully, you know, most of us grew up in a, in a safe place. Like I had a very loving home that I grew up in and it was a safe place. It was my place of refuge. If I, if I couldn't go nowhere else, I could go home and know that I had people who loved me and who cared about me. And so the same thing is happening with this letter bet. It's a picture of a tent, a home, a family. This is where you abide. This is where you rest. This is, and just think of your own home. This is where you abide, you rest, you're inside. It's, it's, in, it's in Ephesians 2.19, it's the household of God. It's, it's God's household. So we're going to go to Psalms, go to um, Psalms 125, verse 1. And I'm going to go to Proverbs 3 and 5. Psalms 125, 1. And. Okay. Mm, that's good. You want to read it? Go ahead and read it. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion which cannot be moved, but abides forever. Wow. Exactly. So again, it's biting. It's abiding. It is, say that, say it again. It is trusting. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved. So we will, so, stop. so we who trust in the Lord are like a mountain. We mm -hmm. cannot be moved. Mm -hmm. Nothing that happens in this earth will move us away from our faith mm -hmm. and our trust in the Lord. Why? Because we abide forever. It, we're abiding with him. Right. And abiding is a continuous, like I'm in his presence. I'm always with God and it's forever. It doesn't stop. I don't leave God's presence when I go to the grocery store. Like he's always with me. I'm abiding in him. Yeah. Like that's, that's. And that's where the trust comes from, because I'm always with God. I, I learn who he is. You know, I know that wherever I go, he's with me. Even when the, when places are scary or things are scary, he's with me. And so I, I can trust him because I know that he, he's, uh, I'm abiding in him and he's abiding me. Amen. Yeah. And in Proverbs 3, 5, um, you can go to um, Psalm 62, 18, while I'm reading Proverbs 3, 5. It says, trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything you do, everywhere you go. He's the one who will keep you on track. Don't assume that you know it all. Run to God, run from evil. 
So again, trust in the Lord with all your heart. That's the one we're reading. Lean not to your own understanding. So don't try to figure it out. Like we in, in, in the world are trying to figure God out. That in itself, because I'm, I'm guilty of it too, because I try to, but I'm so, we're guilty of that because guess what? You can't figure God out because his ways and his thoughts are higher than our ways and our thoughts. Absolutely. He's For infinite. Everybody. He's infinite and all knowing. My little brain, the three percent or what are ten percent that we use, is nothing compared to God. So how could I know more than God? God, right? Mm. Exactly. And it's so we can't. We don't try to figure it out on your own. Listen for God's voice. Mm -hmm. That's what we want to remember. That we need to listen for God's voice in everything that we do and everywhere we go. He will keep us on track. Right. And we'll talk a little bit about those heroes of faith. And I hear the Lord's voice. I know how he talks to me now. And he's going to talk to everybody differently. But when you have um, a relationship and you're, and you're always listening to his voice. It's like, okay, I know sometimes you just know that, you know, like, okay, I heard that. I heard, I heard you got, <laughs> sometimes it may be so quiet. You're like, huh? What, what, did, what did I, need, I need more clarity, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> but you trust him enough. He's going to tell you too. Exactly. He's going to bring confirmation. <laughs> yes. And you have Psalm 62, 18. Yes, ma'am. Wait a minute. Do like 62. 18 mine goes to 62 18 psalm 62 18 natural mine goes up to 12. <laughs> What's psalm, oh it does oh maybe i wrote the wrong one down okay i'm doing 46 one then okay i might have run i might have written the wrong one down I'm, my apologies okay okay, okay. so I will, okay before we move from psalms can i read this since i'm already in psalm 62 yeah. Yes. Yeah, Psalm 62, eight. Oh, eight. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Says trust in him at all times. You people pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us, which is so good, especially like what we're dealing with, with the wars and all this stuff. He is a refuge. If we trust in him during this whole situation, all these things that we're going through, if we can just lean in him, trust in him, he will be our refuge. So he'll guide us into protection. I know some of us are probably getting some pointers here and there, and he's telling us how to prepare or whatever the case is. But yes, he yeah. knows. So we trust We trust what he tells us to do, and he's going to take care of his people. And even when it doesn't make sense, because a lot of times right. when he tells us to do something, we're like, what? Why do he tell you to drive, make a turn right? And you're like, but I live left. Like, why am I going to turn like a lot of times the things that he tells us doesn't make sense, but right. we have to trust that voice that we're listening to and do it because he just stopped something from happening. Exactly. He knows, like we said before, he knows it all. He knows all around us. We can only see, we can only see the tunnel vision part, but he can see all around. So when we trust him, we can avoid all types of, all types of issues. Exactly. <laughs> Um, Psalms 46, one, it says, God is a safe place to hide, mm -hmm. ready to help when we need him. So all of this is part of the bet, the tent, the home, the family, abiding and resting inside of him, a refuge. He's a refuge. Mm -hmm. um, and then the second word, the second letter is tet, and it means rat. So just think about like a, a mama bird protecting her baby, you know, that the baby is underneath the wing of the mom, right? And so they're wrapped. And so it means distinguishing good through experience. So that's what we talked about earlier, having these experiences with God that helps us to trust God, right? And so, under, and then we understand that God is good. So I love the first one that um, came up in the Bible was Ruth 2.12. It was, um, remember, um, Ruth, she was under the covering. Um, if you want to go to it, Ruth 2.12, 
under whose wings you have come to take refuge. She taught, she sought shelter. So she remember, she, and when she went to Boaz, she put his coat over her, her feet. She was putting a protect, she was wrapping herself in who, in him to show that it, it was like, how do I want to say this? She was trying to show him that I, and I trust your covering. I trust your protection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's also, that, I'm sorry, but that also, it just reminds me of like in a marriage in itself, like we trust our husband's guidance, their protection, you know, in the same way. So in the same way, we gotta, we gotta trust God and God's protection. Amen. Amen. Yep, our husbands. Yep. Yep. And he's our daddy. So we, we got to trust him, right? He's our daddy. Mm -hmm. um, and then Chet, um, Chet is the last letter for trust. And it's a hedge of protection. It's a fence. It's a wall. And what came to my mind and it's boundaries. So what came to my mind, when you think of boundaries and a hedge of protection, the first thing that came to me was Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. Because when they stepped outside of the boundary, yeah. because they, they were in his garden under mm -hmm. his protection, mm -hmm. and when they decided to listen to the enemy, they no, they no longer, they were outside. He had to, he had to, he literally had to move them outside. Right. Because right. They, they, they weren't under his covering anymore because they allowed the enemy voice to be bigger and louder than God. And so that's why Jesus is the result of bringing us back into the family of God, back into the covering. So when you are with Jesus, this is why, you know, people don't understand that Jesus life is so significant. Like you cannot sit there and just think, oh, he's just a prophet. I've heard that before. He was just a prophet or I believe that he, you know, was on the earth, but I don't believe that he's the son of God. Like there's a reason why he came because humanity, Adam and Eve, took us outside of the house of the tent of God, listening to the enemy and gave them his authority that God's ultimate beautiful plan was, okay, I'm gonna bring my son in to bring you back to this tent, this abiding, this so to have faith and trust in him. Yeah. So that's what Jesus did for us. Um, thank the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And when it summed up, when I was reading those three letters and reading what they meant, it was so awesome that nine, Psalms 91 just came through summing up all three of the pictures. And I just want to go through Psalms 91 because this sums it up. So, um, so, it's good. so good. It sums up all the, so remember the words. Okay, we got to remember the words abiding, resting, um, wings, um, the wall, fence, protection. So mm -hmm. Psalms 91, you who sit down in the high God's presence. I'm reading out of the message. Okay. Who sit down in the high God's presence. Spend the night in the shadow's shadow. Say mm -hmm. this, God, you are my refuge. One of the words, right? Mm -hmm. I trust in you and I'm safe. That's right. He rescues you from the hidden traps, shields you from the deadly hazards. His huge outstretched arms, it's like those wings, protect you. Mm -hmm. Under them, you are perfectly safe. His arms fend off all harm. This is that mama bear. This is the daddy bear that's going after anyone who's trying to come after you. Mm -hmm. Fear nothing, you know, and then we can go on and on. Do you have a, um, and then here's another one. Yes, because God is your refuge. The high God, your very own home. Mm -hmm. it's, it had, Psalms 91 has all those words. It's all tied up. 
that when you trust in him, when you sit in his presence, mm -hmm. you have that trust in him. You build that trust. Because again, it's about building that trust. Right. I have the um, New King James Version, which is just, just as good, if not, I mean, it's just great. <laughs> but it says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him, I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler, fowler and from the perilous pestilence, coronavirus. <laughs> he shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings, you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, wars or any of those things nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. And it goes on and on. But listen, anytime you need to, to just get some strength and you need some faith and you're afraid of certain things, just tap into Psalms 91. This, this will really just fuel you. It will, it will give you all the goodness that you need to just remember that God is good, that he is our protection. Like, yeah. actually, I think this is when um, our church, we stood on Psalm 91 during this whole pandemic. Like, this was the one that we recited that we continue to meditate, medicate on. Psalms 91 will really just, it'll, it'll set your mind right. Just it will, that. it really will. Yes, absolutely. So, and, and the other thing I was thinking about as you were talking, I just turned to Matthew 625, because, mm -hmm. you know, when we trust God, we don't have to worry. Mm -mm. We don't have to worry. And you were just saying it. We don't have to worry about the wars. We don't have to worry. Now, they may, they may come. Pestilence may come, which we, it has. Mm -hmm. But we don't have to worry about that. We don't have to be in fear of it and we don't have to worry about it. It says 625, Matthew 625. This is why I tell you, never be worried about your life for all mm -hmm. that you need will be provided, such as food, water, clothing, everything your body needs. Isn't there more to life than that? Look at all the birds. So we were just talking about birds and that's what came to me, you know, that do you think they worry about their existence? They don't plant or reap or store food that yet your heavenly father provides for them. Mm -hmm. Like He's providing for the birds. He's providing for the flowers. Why would you worry about your clothing? Look at all the beautiful flowers in the field. They don't work at all. It's like when you're under and you trust God, you don't have to worry about anything like I literally, I mean, th that is really what living a stress-free free life is. Because if you're worried, then you're not trusting God because you're trusting in yourself. You're trusting in someone else and what they do. Um, yesterday, I, we were having a party for my daughter and my brother was supposed to um, come cook. And he called me, he was playing, but he called me talking about, oh, I thought it was tomorrow. He act like he was still asleep. Oh, Lord. <laughs> and I said, you knew it was today. And I hung up the phone on him. I, I, I'm going to be honest. I hung up the phone on him. And my thought was, and so what I did was I continued to listen to my gospel music. And I said, God, you and I got this. Like, I my baby gonna still have her breakfast brunch birthday <laughs> you know and I started preparing you know the stuff and then he gonna you know knock on the door but I did not worry I did not go off about what he didn't do or if he wasn't coming or whatever because I was like Lord we, we gonna cook this meal like what so we don't have to stress over certain things and that's a small that's a small little example but again, when you trust God, you really don't stress and you yeah. don't allow people to stress you. Like if I am stressed, I have to tone it in. Wait a minute, hold on God, mm -hmm. you got me. And I have to center myself, yeah. center my attention on him. That mm -hmm. wait a minute, Lord, I'm feeling a certain way. Let me go into prayer because I don't like, I don't want to feel agitated about anything you know 
I have learned that God is the best therapist. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, I've been telling my husband and some of my friends, I said, listen, when I'm stressed and I have moments where I'm like, oh my gosh, like, honestly, I don't know how people are doing life without God, because <laughs> I'm telling you, I will go to my basement in my quiet place and I will sit and I'm like, I'll write it out. I'll write down what I'm feeling or, you know, whatever's going on. I'll pray. And I'm like, Lord, Jesus, help me. And he will, he will send me the scripture. He will whisper in my ear, whatever I need to do to calm down. Like he literally takes care of all that issues that I be feeling. Now, when I don't do that, that's when I start tripping. <laughs> so that's why I'm like, I don't know how people are living life without Jesus. I, I don't either. Because life is so much better when you're with him and trusting him and letting him take this journey with you. Like, mm-hmm. I don't either, but I do remember what I can say is I remember where I wasn't. And, and I just thank God for where I, where I used to be and where I am right now is it's like night and day. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so if you're not there for those who are listening, if you're not there, don't mm-hmm. worry about it. Just keep, just keep going in him, just keep, you know, and, and asking him, you know, help me every time we trust me when we're when he gives me stuff to discuss I'm like okay help my faith Lord help me to go deeper you know in the things of God and learning about how to trust you and I listen to some things like some some certain type of songs and when I'm listening to them you know like Maverick City and stuff like that they're playing these songs and I'm like and they they they're so deep as far as just wanting to know God so intimately and and I'm like oh god I want that too I want to I want to learn how to just love you and just surrender my life to you like that like I'm I, every when I hear them songs I'm saying I want more like help me lord you know and that's um, and that, that's what will help like when we tap into things that fuel our faith, you know, that builds our spirit, man, like that will definitely help us build the trust and and build our relationship with God and bring us closer to him. When we're watching all kinds of crazy stuff on TV and stuff like that, that doesn't help. Not as much. No, (laughs) it doesn't. It doesn't. And that's where it, it builds. I mean, when you think about it, the TV shows and, and the news and stuff like that. I mean, just think about it's, it feeds so much ugly yeah. and what you put in, I mean, it's just like the computers. It says garbage in garbage out. Right. So when you, what you put in your heart, mm-hmm. you just gotta be really careful um, about what you put in your heart. Like, just, just, you know, there's so much evil in the world and, and I, I thank you, Holy Spirit. And, and therefore God is getting ready to do something. And matter of fact, uh, he did give me something today and I didn't know if I was going to share it or not, but God is saying that he wants to do a new thing. Like he is literally pushing aside the old yeah. to make way for the new. Mm-hmm. And so new wine can't go into old wine skins. Mm-hmm. He's, he, he, it's just not gonna happen. So we have to stop saying that we wanna go back to the normal because there's a new normal in town. There's a new life, there's a new, and, and we gotta believe and trust God in the new normal. Right. And What's going to happen is that this new normal is, um, I, I just, I just feel right now I'm, I'm just like hearing checkmate. Like I'm, I'm hearing guys saying checkmate, like his sons and daughters are going to really shine. Mm-hmm. They're going to really shine. The glory of the Lord is really going to shine. And if we read Hebrews 11, these are the people of faith. And when you trust God, let's go to that them now. When you trust God, like they trust God, and this is where we're, where we're going. And I think Pastor Cynthia was saying something earlier today about this process. Right. That he has us in a process because we do have a calling. We do have um, something that's coming. I, I don't know what it is, but there is this it's just 
so big that I can't, I, I, I can't even, I can't even put it into words. It, it reminds me of eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. That's what he's been. He's been, he's yeah. been putting me in that Roman. I think it's it. Romans to enter the heart of man, the things that God has prepared for them, for them, those who love him, those who trust him, mm -hmm. there's something big on the horizon. Can't even put it to words. We can't, I can't, I don't, I'm trying to figure it out with how to put it into words, but I can't because I just see it is so big mm -hmm. and I just feel like he's getting ready to do a checkmate. Like devil, you thought all the stuff that's going on, you thought I, psh, psh, checkmate. Mm -hmm. um, but I love the people of faith in Hebrews 11 because they, it says that these people did not even, um, they didn't even see their faith. Mm, right. They didn't even see their faith. They it says, okay, eleven. Let me just go. I'm I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm getting so excited. Okay, so Hebrews eleven. It says the fundamental facts of the existence is that this trust in God. I'm in a message. Okay. This faith. So this trust in God. This faith. Remember, we said faith was also a part of the word trust. Mm -hmm. Is the firm foundation under everything that makes life worth living. It's our handle on what we can't see. Right. We got to remember, we can't see this. The right. act of faith is what distinguished our ancestors and set them above the crowd. By faith, we see the world called into existence by God's word, and we see created by what we don't see. What we see created by what we don't see. By an act of faith, Abel brought a better sacrifice to God. It was he believed, remember that was belief was another word. It was that he believed, not what he brought that made the difference. That's what God noticed and approved as righteous. Mm. It was his belief, his trust in God, which brought him into righteousness, not what he brought. Mm. Enoch skipped death completely. Let that be my testimony. Yeah, that's how I said, let that be my testimony. <laughs> Girl, that's my testimony. That's my like Enoch, she walked with God. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's, that's going to be our boat. We're not supposed to write testimony. Amen. Um, it says, because anyone who wants to approach God must believe both that he exists yeah. and that he cares enough to respond to those who seek him. Mm -hmm. That's having a trust. You know that God exists. So you trust him, Enoch trusted him and skipped death completely. It says, by faith, Noah built a ship. He was warned about something he couldn't see. 75 years. That's Listen. crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> he acted on what he was told, what God told him. Mm hmm you trust God, like, like, like Noah, Noah trusted God enough to act on a word that God gave him that he couldn't see, he couldn't understand, but he did it for, like you said, 75 years. Mm. And that's, that's deep. That's, that's, that's some deep trust. It is. It Lord is. help us. Cause we don't get something in a year and we'd be like, what? Lord, where you at? Oh, I, I right. can't, I can't right. Because you ain't done nothing. You ain't done nothing in the last year. Matter of fact, you gave me a word 22 years ago. I'm still wondering where it is. I can't trust you, Lord. Like, I mean, and it's amazing. All these stories that we read, that we're going to read, even here in Hebrews, they're all there to remind us of how we can trust him because the Lord comes through like every time. So we need to just continue to read these stories and be like, you know what? Let me just calm down. <laughs> God will God will come through with his promises. Yeah. He's faithful. He is faithful. So stay there because I like what you just said. He is faithful to perform his word. Exactly. If yeah. he told you, it's yeah. going to happen. Now you may have to wait 20, 30 plus years. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's God. A day to him is like a thousand years to us. Like what? <laughs> you know, but 
if he has promised me, like he has given me some words and he has told me some things, I trust him. I don't make them happen. Right. I'm not trying to make them happen. I do pray them through. I do remind him of his word. Um, I do listen to his voice to see if he wants me to do something concerning that. Mm -hmm. But I trust him that I don't have to worry. I don't have to worry about no money. Right. I don't have to worry about no resources mm -hmm. because he told me to do it. So mm -hmm. therefore I trust him. Just like, like Noah. Noah's like, okay, he told me to do it. I'm going to work for 75 years and I'm going to do it until it's done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You yeah. want to read a couple of them? What was the, um, another one? What about um, 8 through 10, Abraham? Yep. By faith, Abraham obeyed. Before you, before, you, before you do something, let me stay at 7, Noah. Okay. It said Noah built a ship in the middle of dry land. He wasn't even in the water. It was, it was like, no rain. Wasn't it a drought? It was like, yeah. there was, it never rained. It never rained. On dry land, mm -hmm. you building a ship. Wow. And it says, so that the result was that his family would say, so God told him to build something 75 years out. Cause I want us to get this. Mm -hmm. God sees so far into the future. Mm -hmm. And because God knew 75 years into the future and it was going to take 75 years, he told him to do it at that moment. Right, right. Yeah. And he built 75 years on dry land on a word that God gave him. Mm -hmm. And then it says, why? What if he hadn't done it? What if he would have been like, Lord, at, at year 50, Lord, you ain't coming 50 years. I'm tired of building this. I'm we on dry land. Ain't no water come. I'm tired of this. I ain't building no more. Yeah. Then he would have perished. Just like everyone else. Yeah. Like everyone else. He would have perished. But because he act on faith mm -hmm. and drew a sharp line between the evil of the unbelieving world, mm -hmm. because you better bet that the unbelieving world was at him. Mm -hmm. That's like you crazy, you crazy. Right. Like, and it wasn't like something he can hide in his backyard. <laughs> like this gigantic ship. <laughs> Boat. Yeah. Right. right. But he said his act of faith drew a sharp line between the unbelieving world and believing what God said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as a result, Noah became intimate with God. Mm. Mm -hmm. And here is what I love about that. And that's why I wanted to go back to Noah real quick. Because what I saw was here is where you will experience. Remember, we, we talked about the awe of God, the fear mm -hmm. of the Lord. Well, here's where you will experience the awe of God and the goodness of God and the safety of God when you act on what he says and in that process. We've got to be obedient. And that and that shows our love for him too, right? Because that builds our, that's that relationship part. But we've got to be obedient. <laughs> for our own sake. Right, he's doing it. What are you telling you is for, but it's not even, it's, it's, in this case, it was for Noah and his family. And family, right. The majority of the cases is for us. It's for the people who are way, generations that are way ahead of us. It's for the future. Jesus said, okay, not my will, but your will be done, Lord, because right. he saw us, the future. Can you imagine if he said, I can't do it? Lord? <laughs> I'm, I'm on, yeah, right. He saw the future. Mm -hmm. And so what God is calling us to do, and I, I hope I'm, I hope I'm getting across what I'm trying to say is that when he tells us to do something mm -hmm. and we trust and believe and we walk in that in obedience, mm -hmm. he does it. It's going to take a minute, not a minute, let me to be honest. It's going to take a long time, maybe in some cases, mm -hmm. but it's not even really for you. It's for the future. It's for the generation. I feel like right now, I'm going to be honest. I feel like right now, a lot of stuff that I'm doing 
it's for people who are going to be left behind. I'm just. I agree. I agree. I just got to yeah. keep it going. Mm -hmm. The yeah. podcast, these podcasts, mm -hmm. the books that he has me writing, the movie, like it's for the future. Mm -hmm. I agree. It's for now too. Cause you can grab some nuggets. Like hopefully you guys are grabbing nuggets for right now so that you don't be left behind in the name of Jesus. <laughs> we don't want anybody left behind. God doesn't want anybody left behind, mm -hmm. but it's always for the future. Mm -hmm. And so, um, like, I so, love sorry, but even, even the stories that we're reading now, they didn't know that it was going to be right. 2000 something 3000 years that we would be tapping into these stories and we could build our faith based on what they experience so in the same way like when we write journals who's to say the journals that we're writing somebody's going to read that be like oh my gosh she had a relationship with god like that you know she was talking to god she was did they hit they did this together they did that together like all these things like you said it, it could be for the people in the future generations so, and yeah. even for my grandkids, like I have all the books that I've read, I make sure I journal in all of my books mm -hmm. and I date them so that my grandkids and my great grandkids can see this is the legacy that they'll have so that they can see that, oh man, look at grandma, you know, look at great grandma. She, she believed God like that. Look at, like it's for them too. So right. even if it's not worldwide, are you doing something like a Noah? Mm -hmm. You got a generation and generations of your own family exactly. that you also are writing for or doing stuff for and being obedient to. Mm -hmm. It's so good. I love it. I love it. Go ahead. You had something. Oh, go go to verse 13. Okay. okay. These all died in faith, not having received the promises but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. They did not receive the promises. Yep. Yep. So in my, in my thing, it says each one of these people of faith died, not yet having in hand what was promised, but still believing. So and that's trust. Could be. And that's how we got to be. We've got to be able to still believe and trust God that what he's telling us to do, that we're doing it. And it mm -hmm. says, how did they do it? It says, how did they do it? They saw it way off in the distance. Mm -hmm. They saw the future and accepted the fact that they were just pilgrims in this world. Like we're just, we're, we are, we're, we're just pilgrims. We're just, we're not we're here. Passing through. <laughs> yeah. as, as children of God, we're passing through. And it says people who live this way, make it plain that they are looking for their true home, going back to the home, trusting the picture of the tent, the family abiding in God. Because mm -hmm. we are going back to our true home. Mm -hmm. um and then verse 39 you want to read verse 39 and all these having obtained a good testimony through faith did not receive the promise i underlined that because sometimes i gotta re be reminded <laughs> like <laughs> even if i don't see it like i still gotta continue to be obedient and love god you know, we yeah. can trust yeah. God because he knows the, the beginning from the end. He knows who needs whatever I'm, I'm, whoever, whatever I'm doing, he knows who needs it, you know. And do we get, and the thing is, is do we get everything that we want? No, God ain't got no spool. I mean, we, I'm sorry, we can jump in and have our pity parties and because I have mine. <laughs> But I don't get everything I want. Right. But guess what? I still trust him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's not going to waver. My trust for him is not going to waver because I don't get something that I wanted from him. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I, it's like my mom and my dad, you know, if, if, if you know, back in the day when we were kids, you know, and your parents couldn't afford something like I didn't have parents that can afford every single thing that I wanted. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> 
you know, but they gave me what they had and I was appreciative of it. And it's like, God, you're not going to get everything you want. Now he's merciful. There's grace. Thank the Lord. Um, I will, I do remember once when my, my dad, my biological dad was dying and, um, I prayed for God to give him more years because I didn't have kids. And I was like, I want my kids to know they grant, like they grandfather. And he gave him seven more years. That was by the great, that was God's grace. That was his grace. But if he had taken them, what was that? I mean, what? It was his time to go. And I, and I actually was, you know, and when it was time his go, his time to go again, and God said, Joel, you know, it's his time. Mm -hmm. And I said, I can't be mad at you, God, because you gave me seven more years. Like, what? I can't even ask for more. Right. He's just so good. He's good regardless, right? Right. It's like my kids got to see and have an experience with their grandfather. Yeah. But again, we don't get everything we want. There's, there are certain things that I've wanted and I didn't get. Mm -hmm. And we got to be okay with that. I was okay with it. Mm -hmm. And I will be okay with it. Mm -hmm. But I do know one thing that because I trust him, I've got faith in him. Mm -hmm. I believe in him. I have confidence in him. My allegiance is towards him and him only. Yeah. I'm devoted to him. Mm -hmm. My security is in him. My hope is in him. I abide in him. Ma'am. <laughs> My yeah. refuge is in him. Mm -hmm. All of the above. All of the above. You can't move me. I'm like that. I'm like that Mount Zion. You can't move me. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's where he wants us to be. You know, that's, I mean, there's so many scriptures in the word that talks about trusting God. Obviously, this is what he wants us to do. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And it says, um, in my version, it says, not one of these people, even though their lives of faith were exemplary, got their hands on what was promised. God had a better plan, a better plan for us. So those people were because of us. Do you get what I'm saying? That he had a better plan for us, that their faith and our faith would come together to make one complete whole, that their lives of faith not complete apart from ours. What we do is for the future. What God does is for the future. Don't look at your current circumstances. Don't look at the current circumstances in the world and what's going on with war and pestilence. Like all of this, he said, I work together all things for the good. Mm -hmm. And then we have to go back to that scripture that says, don't, don't worry about your life. Right. Like our life is just a vapor. Literally. So we just yeah. got to obey God, love God, do what he tells us to do and keep it moving. <laughs> keep it moving. And don't go um, against what God is doing. Mm. So a lot of times we want to pray our, what right. we want and what we think should happen. And we really need to make sure that we don't go against God's what he's doing because it's and, uh, about his will it's about his will so pray his perfect will be done in the earth if you don't know what to pray for like even with you know the war that's going on and all the things that's going on my prayer is god in all of this let your perfect will be done exactly yeah it's and not we don't know what that is we no. don't always know his perfect will we pray that we we do we pray in the spirit, <laughs> you know, that helps. But yeah, we, that's the trust again, trusting that his will is perfect. My will is not. We want to, we want to be in mesh. We want to be in sync with his will, you know, but we trust, we have to trust his will be done. Absolutely. And then 2 Corinthians 5, 7, as Christians, bottom line, we are supposed to walk by faith. Yep. and trust in the Lord. We're supposed to walk by the trust in God and not by sight, which is not by the things of what we see in this world. Mm -hmm. 
That's our whole, that's the whole thing of our, our Christianity is, is faith. The whole thing is based on faith. Yeah, that even though we don't see, uh, what's that song? I just heard it in my say, even though when we don't see him, he's working. He right. never stops, he never stops working. Like that came to my script. Like you don't, you may not see what he's doing. You may not see what he's working, but but you know he's working. He never stops working. <laughs> and so, um, and the last thing is Jeremiah twenty nine. You have that? Um, I believe so. Yes. Jeremiah twenty nine. I should have charged my iPad, and then I could have just <laughs> used that. But I'm using my my hard cover back Bible. Okay, it says, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil to give you a future and a hope. He knows that, the thoughts. And, and there's that future again. Mm -hmm. like, wait a minute hold on don't trust like i know what i what i'm gonna do i know the plans that i have towards you i know the plans that i have towards the united states i know the plans and thoughts that i have towards my children my people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to give you an expected end mm -hmm. so all this stuff that's going on like we don't even understand that even with the um the, the, the children of Israel and during Egypt, like all the stuff that he was doing during that time was to take them out of bondage. Mm -hmm. That the, the plagues came and you know all the all the 10 the 10 plagues that came. Right. Yeah, that was evil. That was like probably mean or whatever. But he was doing it so that his people could be free. Like he had a plan. He had a plan. Like, this is the only way that I can get them out because Pharaoh wasn't going to let them go. Right. And he right. turned and he changed his mind several times. I ain't let him go. I'm not letting him go. So, but God had to do what he had to do to, to because he had a plan for his people. And so his plan is to bring his children, those of us who believe in Jesus Christ, is to bring us back into a heaven reality, mm -hmm. eventually, eternity. Yep. yep. And all the stuff that goes along out there is going to happen. Mm -hmm. But when we're abiding, yes, and we're trusting in the Lord, and we're at all at His at His presence, and we have respect and reverence for Him. There's that covering, that shield in Psalms 91. And that gives us peace, you know? That's what we need, especially now. We need that peace. And so the more we trust in God, you know, the more we tap in and the more we abide, like you said, the peace will come. And we don't want, we don't want the world's peace. Mm -hmm. So everybody's looking for peace. Everybody's looking for peace and I get it, right? Mm -hmm. But you want the peace of God. You want his peace. Because the world can't give us the kind of peace that we really need internally. Right. And that peace, that peace is is more valuable <laughs> right. than anything. Mm -hmm. So I pray that you guys got something about trusting in God and just remembering that we're still we're still studying about the fear of the Lord and just being in awe of God and respect and reverence for Him. But in order to have respect and reverence for God, you got to trust him. And he really wants his people to learn how to trust him. And so we also wanted to pray for, um, before we pray out, tell us about your book. You've got a new book. I do. Um, in this book. <laughs> listen, I'm waiting for this book. <laughs> it's called Your New Life as a Christian. Oh, it's blurry. Hold on. Let me unblur my screen so you can see it. There we go. Okay. This is the this is the proof copy, but it's your new life as a Christian. It's a guide for new believers. So it just gives them foundational truth and stuff, just you know, talking about their walk with God, things that they might question when they first get saved. Like when I got saved, I, I didn't know nothing and I didn't I didn't go to church 
for like four years, I was just lost and I became a serious heathen <laughs> in those, <laughs> during those times. But if I had somebody or a book like this to give me, you know, some tips and some guidance, you know, I, I would have, I would have been much better off. <laughs> but yeah, so um, I where plan. Can I get, where can I get the book? Where can I get the book? When I publish it, <laughs> it'll be on Amazon, and I'll share a link online to a website that they can they can purchase it. And I and I believe um, like Barnes and Noble maybe. We'll see. Okay. I okay. trust. <laughs> Yeah, trust the Lord. Amen. Well, congratulations. I'm so happy for you. Thank and so I just want to list, um, lift up real quick before we go. Just lift up what's going on in Ukraine and um, what's the other one? Russia. Um, mm -hmm. Lord, we just pray your perfect will to be done. Lord, we pray for your protection over the people. In, in, those, in that country, Lord God, that you will protect them and keep them, Lord God, that you will give them a way of escape, Lord God. And Lord, we ask that you would just speak to the hearts of people who are trying to do wrong and make it right, Lord God. Let them have an encounter with you, Lord God. Lord, you are in control. We trust you that you know what is going on and that you are in control. And so we just thank you, Lord God. We lift up the United States. Yes, we pray, Lord God, that you would protect our country and all countries, Lord God. Mm -hmm. But it, more than anything, we pray your perfect will be done yes. on earth as it is in heaven. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, we thank you. That's all we can do. Mm -hmm. all right well thank you guys thanks for joining us love you guys talk to you next week okay